Hello, in this video we're going to look at the perfectly competitive firm supply curve and then from that we're going to drive the market supply curve. We'll largely do this graphically. So we're going to start with a perfectly competitive firm here. Uh, this is going to be one of a hundred firms in this perfectly competitive market, each with the exact same cost structure. Uh, this competitive firm's average variable cost is this U-shaped curve here and its marginal cost curve intersects average variable cost at its minimum point, at the minimum point of average variable cost, and uh, rises above it. So the main thing to note is that the supply curve of a competitive firm is its marginal cost curve. It's going to technically be that portion of the marginal cost curve that lies above average variable cost. The reason for that is we have something called the shutdown point. Uh, to locate the shutdown point, just find the minimum point on the average variable cost curve and that'll also be the point where marginal cost intersects average variable cost. If the market price happened to be below the shutdown point, if the market price happened to be below the shutdown point or the minimum point on the average variable cost curve, the firm would shut down and produce zero units of output. So therefore, technically, the relevant portion of a competitive firm supply curve is that portion of the marginal cost curve that lies above average variable cost. All right, so we have a perfectly competitive market consisting of 100 firms, each identical to the one that is pictured here. Given that information, let's derive the market supply curve. What would be the total quantity supplied in the market at various prices? So we're going to do this by constructing a table. And this table will have various market prices and then the quantity supplied by the firm over here on the left. And then we'll get to the market quantity supplied. So at a price of $6, this competitive firm would bring 40 units to the market. At a price of $10, this competitive firm would bring 50 units to the market. At a price of $17 per unit, this competitive firm brings 60 units to the market. Again, at any price below $6, the firm would produce nothing, zero units of output, as a way to minimize its losses. So that's the, this right here describes uh, the relationship between price and quantity supplied for one firm, but what about 100 firms? So to get that relationship, since we have uh, 100 firms just like this one, all we have to do is take this 40 and multiply it by 100. So in other words, we have 100 firms each producing 40 units, so the total market quantity supplied will be 4,000. Likewise, at a price of $10, we have 100 firms each producing 50. The total quantity supplied in the market will be 100 times 50, or 5,000 units. And then the same reasoning will be applied for what's happening here at a market price of $17. 100 firms each producing 60 gives us 6,000 units of, uh, of output being supplied at the market price of $17. All right, uh, graphing that, here is the market supply curve, upward sloping market supply curve. Again, at a market price of $6, we saw on the table 4,000 units would be brought to the market. At a price of $10 per unit, 5,000 units, and at a price of $17, 6,000 units would be brought to the market. So that is how you construct a market supply. I hope you found this video helpful.